also like to know where you're viewing from today. So if you could please type your location in those chats, that would be great as well. I'll announce that a little bit later on. So welcome and Tony, it's always great to be together for these events. I always look forward to them. I look forward to all the questions that come in and look forward to being with you mostly. So senior instructor, Tony Kozenak. Tony. Thanks, Mary. Um, the, the purpose of, of this event is, uh, well, it's twofold because we know that many of our students watch uh, the the Q&A through uh, social media. And so it's an opportunity for students from, uh, from Cobb U at every level of study to be able to ask questions or, or just see what other people are asking and participate that way. But it's also an opportunity for people who are just interested in Kabbalah, who, who may have certain points of view or questions about it, uh, who want to know what its relevance is, uh, what it really is about, uh, if, it, if it's something that can actually help us in our lives, in the direction of our lives, does it explain something about the deeper aspects of our existence? Uh, and, and so this is the opportunity for that. Anything that, that's going on uh, in the world, any kind of question that you have about it in relation to Kabbalah, you know, we'll do our best to answer. Uh, in general, though, uh, we know from from teaching for a long period of time, and Cobb U is a is a sort of an institution. It's like a it's like a online university that takes people from the very beginning stages and concepts, all the way through to the practical, the practical method of Kabbalah to the things that actually do grip into the, the reality of life and change people's perception and, and bring change to the world through a, a kind of, a, of a, an integral connection between people and people with the law of nature so that we, we help guide the entire system. We know uh, that there's so much complexity apparently in the world but one of the great gifts of Kabbalah is that there is a way of looking at this complexity that focuses exactly onto human perception. This is a science of, of the upper forces, but it's the upper forces in relation to the human heart and, the, and human perception. It differs from, uh, from other sciences in that it involves the the transformation and the development of the scientist. Uh, you know, there's, there's this phenomenon in, in mathematics that there is no, uh, there's no consistency in math. It's not possible to completely explain uh, by corollary you, to prove that one thing leads to another when the numbers or the sets of numbers where, where, where the point of view includes the self. It's, it's a, a phenomenon known in mathematics. It is impossible uh, for there to be uh, any dependable knowledge in regards to the self or into something that we call mathematically the self. Well, this is the big difference uh, between math and regular science and wisdoms and the wisdom of Kabbalah because the wisdom of Kabbalah is all about the real definition of self. Why is it that it's impossible to know anything about, about self? Is it perhaps that there is no such thing? And if there isn't, then what are we? And how are we to understand our relationship to nature? And Kabbalah breaks this all down into a very simple set of understanding, a set in which we understand how the force of nature and human awareness work. And it goes like this. There is a, a, an upper force that is called the, the intention, the desire to bestow. There is us and all uh, of, of what we think of as life and existence, which is the will to receive. And then there is the interaction between these two things. And the difference between these two things, between our, the created creatures, or, uh, 
the cosmos, the existence, its desire to, to receive for itself alone, and the upper force, which is a desire to bestow without thought of self until it bestows complete fulfillment. The difference between these two things determines what human awareness is, the world that we see, whether we're happy or unhappy, well or unwell, the condition of the world, all of the phenomena that we see in it, and every aspect from, from the macro down to the, the micro is all about the difference between these two forces and the place in which it plays out is in the human heart and in our, our attitude towards others. In other words, the reason for which we are living. Now, yes, there are all of these enormous phenomena and, and detailed phenomena. All of them are controlled, directed, and follow from the intention that happens in the human heart in relation to the ultimate law of nature. That's what Kabbalah is about. It, it simplifies it down to, uh, human existence down to a place where we actually do feel, see, and what we call reality, and it gives us a way in which to feel those things and to transform ourselves in such a way that we are working in synchronization with this upper law. And from that comes happiness, fulfillment, and, and uh, a good outcome to everything in this place that we call this world. So I'll, in the answers that uh, I will attempt to give today, I will try to reflect that for you so that you can see how, how, how it applies directly to everything that's truly important to you in your life. Okay, Mary, let's go with the first question. Okay, great. Crystal James, viewing on YouTube, has a question about connecting the corporeal realm and the spiritual. Uh, his two questions are, her two questions, does attaining the spiritual realm require some kind of meditation at a certain time of day or night? And Tony, have you attained the spiritual realm yourself? Do you, do you actually meet the creator? Well, it's an interesting question. I'll start with the second part. Nobody attains the creator by themselves. This is what I was pointing to in that uh, phenomena in math. There really is no self. The, uh, the attainment of, of the creator is a f happens in between people, not in a person. Yes, it's attainable. Um, many do and many are. <laughs> experiencing what Kabbalah calls the creator, uh, which is that force that animates and connects everything, the integral quality, that heart and mind that is actually shared because we are not individuals, we are, we are a, a single creature uh, against that single force that governs everything. So the attainment of the creator is not something that happens essentially in the individual, but happens when the individual changes their focus to include and think of and direct all good and all thought towards the well-being of the whole system. In that action, and in learning how to do that action, and locating where such a thing that we call intention actually exists in a person, that's, that's the place in which the the creator or the law, the general law of nature is discovered in a person. It can't be done through physical means. Uh, it has to be done by means of that aspect of the force that exists within a human being. And that is, that is the aspect of intention, not actions. Actions can be all kinds of things. They can look one way, but the intention behind them can be completely opposite to it. So meditation is not part of, of Kabbalah. Kabbalah includes a very active, conscious, uh, full-time engagement with uh, the scrutinies that lead to identifying what our desires are, because the entire creation is only a desire, and the ability to direct that desire to the fulfillment of others through a means that we call intention. That's it, and that's what people learn to do 
when they study Kabbalah. They start with principles and then they begin to see how to use these principles in relation to other people between which that force of the law of nature does exist. It doesn't exist in the individual, but in the connections. Mary? Okay, next, Maria Shalachi is asking, do you think that a person could be born with a capability to feel the upper world without any instruction? Everybody's born with a, with a spiritual gene uh, for that purpose. I mean, and that's the goal of everything in creation anyway, is to reach that full conscious attainment. Everybody has it, whether that gene is switched on or off, depends on the development of of that individual no nobody has uh has that connection alone within themselves it doesn't happen until bridges are made uh in terms of seeing others that way and that's what this general law love your friend or love your neighbor as yourself uh, that's what this means so if you take that basic gene, if it's turned on for you, and you try to find an environment in which that, that gene or that seed, that point in your heart can develop, meaning that that's the purpose of that environment, that, that group of people is aimed only at, the fulfill, at your being able to fulfill that, and you are there only so that they will be able to fulfill it, then that turned on gene will will turn into a complete revelation of um, of the perfection uh, of you your soul and the creation and and one will develop it doesn't come without work it must be conscious because the whole goal of creation is that we will eventually be able to be think and do and synchronize with the intention be that created everything and that's not an intention of receiving it. You don't just have it. You don't just get it. It, it, it comes in developing the ability to give it. And that's when uh, the spiritual gene becomes fulfilled. Mary? Okay. Uh, watching on Facebook is Laurentiu mm -hmm. Mihai Ursu, who wants to know, where is the limit between what I intend and what our creator already decided for me in the material world? The Creator's not deciding for us basically aimed at the material world. The, the, the Creator is, is deciding and guiding us towards the spiritual realm. The, the material world is just a set of tools and opportunities for us to make that conscious decision to do that work and to become like, like what it is that the Creator intends for us. That's the whole work. We don't have any other model of reality except what the Creator created. And what the Creator created includes our desires, the things we want, the things we think we want, the things that, that move us along, and especially the things that get in our way because they're very special things. They make us, they aim us towards a correct desire because right now, our heart is filled with many, many different desires, and most of them are, are material desires. I don't mean like for stuff, but they've got to do with the ego. They've got to do with satisfying the self. And that's the only thing we take pleasure in now. So what, what, what Kabbalah teaches a person to do is to, to find the means to synchronize with what, is, what the creation already is in its perfection and to become like that in our own intentional or let's say spiritual realm. So uh, the, what the Creator already created for us is like a railroad track, but we have to, we have to put this, the, we have to fire up the coal, we have to build the steam, and we have to want to move along that track. And that, along that track is where our fulfillment lies. It has nothing to do with our, our free will has nothing to do with the imaginary idea that we can do this, that, or the other thing and make up all kinds of different directions to go there there is a general path that that we all must follow we have different characters but we're still all moving down that same track the point is to want to go down the track and to want to do it together and to want to do it in order to fulfill others and then we're fulfilling the thought of the creator and at the same time we're filling our own desire think about that 
His desire becomes our desire. It is our desire. Where else do our desires come from and where else can they go? Mary? Hey, next question is from Victor uh, watching on YouTube. Is this statement correct? Man is on earth to correct their ego. If this is not yet corrected, then men will return to a new body. If ego is fully corrected, then you are not necessary in this world. That took an interesting twist at the end, you know? Uh, no, I mean, the, the last assumption, no. Um, it's not that one is not necessary, it's that one is, is totally fulfilling the purpose of this world. So, and, and that already then exists in a person. So yes, to the first part. Uh, the, the purpose of our life is to fulfill the, the thought of creation which is to develop us to, to a point where we are like a force of nature and we are like the law of nature. And therefore, we do what the law of nature ultimately does, which is to take care of everything all at once, to fulfill everything, and is in bliss and, and joy and perfection. This world is like screens on that. So a person develops themselves to the point where they are, hopefully, that they become fully engaged with that. But if we are only partially engaged with it, then we return. But it, that doesn't mean a physical return, but you can call it that, because that's the way we perceive now. We return to continue to work to correct what we desire and for whom we desire it for. Uh, and there's no other purpose to our existence other than to fulfill the the law of nature itself. And actually, there's nothing that we find more delightful, enjoyable, uh, and desirable than that. We just think that the things that we desire are not that. But it's already the world that we live in, except we're not attuned to it. So we keep, to the degree that we, we're like it, we advance and we, we feel those those sorts of connections and our perception of reality changes and to the degree that we're not we return in a sense to work again on overcoming even more until we we reach that state so yeah i agree with the first part of what you're saying that is what kabbalah says the last part no that's that's already a uh, uh, something that we can only talk about once there is attainment Okay, next on Facebook, Orlando Moreira Torres is asking, could you please expand on the meaning of freedom? Well, freedom is something that you feel. Everything is something that you feel. So there are concepts that we, you know, sort of lenses that we put over this force called freedom. Uh, if we view freedom from the point of view of self-satisfaction or from the ego, then we will think of unrestricted, unrestrained ability to, to satisfy ourselves and, and experience what we define as pleasure. Uh, this is, that's the material idea of freedom. The spiritual idea of freedom is to be one with what with the only thing that is. There is a single force that runs absolutely everything. Kabbalists call that none else besides him. He being simply meaning, uh, Kabbalah uses gender in this way. Uh, it's just scientific terminology. It uses he for the force of bestowal and she for the, the force of reception. That's all that that means. So there is none else but the force of bestowal. Freedom, actual freedom in spiritual terms, means to be attuned with, synchronized, and be doing this, and to find ultimate pleasure in doing that, and ultimate fulfillment in doing it. So it's like being embraced, and first you feel like a pressure. You mean this is the only thing that can be, and your beloved has their arms around you, and you can't escape it. You can't. It's... And are you being imprisoned by this embrace? No. You, we look into what the deepest 
truest part of our desire is to be embraced and to embrace. And it's not a restriction. In this is freedom, support, love, vastness, and perfection of connection in the embrace. So sp spiritually speaking, freedom is to embrace the embrace, to, to take on um, reality on its terms, spirituality on its terms, and not on the terms of the ego. Mary? Yeah, this is an interesting question. Uh, Jetsy de Jagger watching on YouTube is asking, do men have to reincarnate more times because they are less spiritual than women? No. It's a very, you're, you're asking something that is complex because talking about reincarnation is really talking about a spiritual emotional process that is happening in us all the time but the ego sees incarnation and reincarnation that is like having light enter the vessel uh, light replace the ego uh, more or less it sees it in terms of life and death physical life and death but uh, that, that's not how Kabbalah talks about it. So my answer is not going to be from, th uh, from talking about it physically. Yes, the, the men are, are f placed farther from an innate natural connection to bestowal than women, but but men and women and the male and female part exist in in everyone and it's it is the both of these things are under correction it's like finding the correct relationship um i don't think i can do better than that and i'm sorry if i if i can't satisfy that that question but uh, i think i would start talking about things that would start to confuse us and s set us in the wrong direction so i'm going to leave that there Okay, next, Jeremiah Para, viewing on Facebook, wants to know, how do you know if you are already achieving your soul? You're not. You, you can take that. You can take, take that to the bank. If you are, the only way you know that you, that that is happening or you get any sense of it is by working with others who are also uh, working in that direction only, that that is the purpose of the reason that they're relating with each other. Then you can begin to measure it. A person cannot measure their, their own self or their soul because our soul is not in us. Our soul is others. Our soul exists outside of what we think of as the self. Our soul is, is our connection to others. So, uh, in, in order to be able to feel that, you have to consciously be working with people in that direction and only for that purpose. And that's what the method uh, of Kabbalah teaches a person to do, uh, to, to set up a situation in which that can happen. And then there's an there's a aspect of the methodology that shows what to do in that situation in order to begin to perceive where spiritual actions are and, and how much of of your shattered soul has been reclaimed, has been put back together. At the beginning of, of the creation of this world uh, it, that's, that we call the physical world or that's full of humanity, there was a purposeful shattering that happened. We were created as a single creature. And then in order for us to be able to achieve the ultimate outcome, which is to, uh, to be able to consciously care for all the pieces and to reunite them into a single soul uh, the the upper force shattered the, the creature into into you know let's say billions Kabbalah says 600,000 parts it's, it's not an it's not a number it's a quality 
So what we see now is we see as though there were there are a whole lot of separate people with very different characters that want very different things, that hate each other actually, and don't really want association with each other unless it benefits them personally, and all that. And that's the that sort of hatred that was injected. That is the major part of the creation. That is that is a good helpful force, but it was done purposefully so that we can learn to overcome those barriers between us and to begin to reconnect the parts so that we then have a soul. None of us individually has a soul. The soul is what connects. It's what we call the creator. To the degree that we are connected and identify with other people, that's the soul. Uh, and if we want to grow our soul, we have to serve what appears to be outside of us because all of the broken parts we have cast out from our own heart. We don't see it as ourself, but it is ourself. So your soul is outside of you. And that's why it's why happiness in the world, your own happiness in life, uh, good outcomes, peace, health, and all that has only to do with, the, with connection in humanity, not in the attainment of the individual, but in the well-being of the whole. That is the attainment of the individual because that out there, that's your soul, that's you. The whole is you, not the part. And that's, it's actually, it's really, really simple, but something that we have lost thousands of years ago. We lost the perception of this thing. We stopped having the sensitivity to feel that this is actually the, the you know, the, the structure of life. We are in the greatest, most opportune point in all of human history right now because we are at the, the nth degree of egoism and separation, which means that its opposite is about to occur. That is complete and total connection and, and the rising of humanity onto a completely, onto the first degree of a spiritual level for everybody. But it's not just going to happen. We have to contribute to this, and that's that's why Kabbalah is available now. It is the ancient wisdom the, of the law of nature. That's all that it is. It always existed. It's a component of nature. It's just that now it is being expressed through human awareness, and it's telling us, okay, you want to keep the law? This is the law. This is how you keep it. It's really simple, but it's opposite to what you think. It's opposite to the logic of, of uh, the ego. Simple to do, but hard to make that first jump. You can't do it alone. You must do it together, and this is how. Mary. Hey, Tony. A uh, question came up with regards to the male and female parts. Debbie Brady wants to know, are all humans feminine vessels for reception? Yes. Everything in creation is feminine. The whole, the whole creation is the will to receive. The, your growing awareness and your uh, completing the, the creation, uh, is, it, this is something that's above gender. It's the integration of both of these forces in a correct way so that receiving becomes bestowal through intention. You, it's possible to receive something not for yourself, but in order to fulfill the one who gave it to you. So that your act of receiving intentionally, you, one only receives in order to fulfill the good will and the heart and the experience of the person who gave it to you. So here you see an act that looks like reception. Once it's integrated correctly between th these two forces through intention, both become giving. Both the giver and the receiver become givers. And now the only force that exists between them is givers. So uh, male and fee the, the whole creation is female, but it, but it eventually, through its own um, conscious development, becomes male just like the creator. It, in other words, it turns the entire creation into bestowal. Okay, Tony, I'd uh, like to share some of the locations uh, where viewers are watching from. We've pretty much covered the entire globe. We have Minneapolis, Rotterdam, Sydney, Australia, the Netherlands, Caracas, Venezuela, New York, Portland, Oregon, Utah, Colorado, Luray, D.C., Mesa, Arizona, 
France, Vienna, Montreal, Canada, Bulgaria, Dublin, Ireland, California, Florida, Puerto Rico, Nigeria, New Jersey, and Turkey. Say so, Puerto Rico again, Mary. Puerto Rico. <laughs> I feel like I'm there. Yes, we should all be there. Okay, next question uh, comes from Doug West viewing on Facebook. If you absolutely need a 10 in order to attain the creator, how did individuals do it in times past without the accessibility of a 10? They didn't. People, the, the law of nature didn't change. Uh, the, the minimum 10 is two. Uh, wherever two or, or more are gathered in my name, you heard that biblical quote. So it, it has to do with relation. And in the past, um, because we were not, we weren't so developed egoistically, so coarse as we are now, and so capable of, com of a complete instantaneous attainment collectively, because we were subtle um, in our egoism, the wisdom was passed down f between individuals or th in small groups. It was, it was always a teacher and a, and a collection of people. This constitutes a 10. It's the boundary uh, of the of the study or the learning or the passing on of the of this of this law of nature that is the issue. That the only reason for the relationship, whether it's between a teacher and a, and one student, or a teacher like Abraham and thousands of students, uh, or a ten, is that the only reason that the relationship exists is in order to fulfill this so that it should be passed on and so that what is passed on as the law of nature becomes fulfilled that's it it doesn't it's that that constitutes a, a proper construction in the past now we're at a different place because now we're organized even in our egos we're organized globally we have touched the ends of the earth uh, in every possible way Anything that we do in, a, in our communities affects, is, there's a, an interaction that just rolls out to every aspect of the globe. And we have become directly, even in our egoistic, this world, directly responsible for the well-being of others everywhere. So the method, the necessity of the form of the method has changed because now it can actually be fulfilled. The law of nature on its touches the entire creature and there's an opportunity for the entire creature to become one, to become aware of it as a, as a single integral uh, being. So it's, so all the principles uh, that, that exist in Kabbalah, like the ten sephirot and the way in which reality is, is organized, now they all come into play. Now is the time for, you know, where we actually can, e can implement such a thing as, as tens worldwide. We have virtual connection. We, like in this lockdown that we just had, many lockdowns, many years, uh, we learn to connect with each other on an, on an internal basis through the, the, the you know, the crutches of, of technology. But it was revealing to us the truth of our situation. Now we can actually implement and must implement learning and relating like in pods to the law of nature and not just through an individual. It's possible to do it. It's necessary to do it. It is allowed from above to do it. And so we have to fulfill it on its largest scale. So that deals with the past how things changed and where we are now that's the form for now mary hey tony we have another question uh with regards to what you can do by yourself and and uh what you need other people to to attain in the on the path marcus busby from youtube is asking can you describe the stage where the clea is empty and it feels like there is no connection to then receiving the light in other words 
the light returns to the clee, filling it with the creator's light. Is this possible in isolation? Part of the process is, is that we continually become both isolated, necessitating, like creating a desire for the light, which is the, the connection and the integral quality of the heart to enter that's it we start to desire that you can't you can't you can force feed people if they're ill you know you can feed them intravenously but that's not how our life works when we're healthy we eat when we're hungry and and nature has created the system so that that's the way that it works we want what what nature wants to give us so we we it necessitates that we feel lonely and disconnected alternately with the filling of the light which is to understand feel and become like that that integral connection and to want it we we have to have the spe specific hunger for the specific nutrition that's required for us to grow spiritually so there's always this aspect of the individual the loneliness the being cut off the being lost confused and the hunger that's built in that for the fulfillment of the of the light and the connection and where all good actually exists for us which is in connection with other people we're never happy alone we're happy when we're successful in that connection so it's what's called love so they're both necessary and that's basically I'm, that's the basic description is being disconnected lost confused alone without hope full of doubt have being unable to make that kind of a connection which creates in us the desire to be able to make the connection gives us a hunger to do it and corrects our desire away from desires for things that actually distract us and towards the one thing that nature wants to fulfill us with. Nature is like a father with a gift behind his back on your, for your birthday, and you can only have what he has behind his back. What he really wants is that you will want what he has for you. So that's what this whole system uh, does. It develops a desire for the thing that nature wants to give us. Mary. Okay, Tony, uh, a question is a follow-up to the light. Hanish Andramatla is asking, is meditation the only way to experience the light? It is not a way to, to experience the light in its completeness. Meditation um, meditation has effects in, um, in focusing a person uh, on the fact that it is the inner realm in which desire and intention exist, the tools that, that we need to learn to work with. It takes away the distraction of, of the external uh, and makes it clear that the work has to be an inner work and that the reality, that our reality depends on the sense of all of that really being within us and we're responsible for it but in Kabbalah the the methodology for fulfilling that happens by using everything that we've been given we don't take ourselves away from the complexity and rush of uh, of the multiplicity of forces in nature we engage them consciously with our eyes open and with what we discover uh, of, of those forces within us and we bring that inner uh, to, the, to our relationship with the outer world and by doing that we transform the outer world into what it truly is, the, the quality of our own heart towards others. So it's act in Kabbalah. It's active. There is there is no part for meditation in Kabbalah. That is a, that is a, a different path. 
Okay, next, Tony Solomon Tab from the Philippines wants to know, what is the real purpose of pain and suffering? Why do they continue to exist even if someone has committed himself to study, prayer, and good deeds? The reality is made up of, <clears throat> of a dynamic, and the dynamic is called the left and the right hand. Uh, it's a force of development, and it doesn't matter that we have committed ourselves to take uh, to to want to evolve and and want others to evolve too. That doesn't matter. It doesn't excuse us from the way in which nature interacts with us. That's how it interacts with us. We can't see and we can't perceive really even the goal because our mind and our heart is run by an operating system called the ego. And the ego's logic is opposite to the logic of the, of the spiritual or, or of the, the, the force of bestowal. Its logic is determined completely by reception, by me attaining something, achieving, and, and so on. But nature never rests. It's always using these two forces to, to evolve us. It must destroy what was before in order to be able to birth what is next. And we must, and we, it forces us to stop associating and identifying with the limited aspects of, of our egoistic desire, to leave it because we feel we can no longer live in that, that's what's called pain or suffering or so on, until we understand this process and synchronize with the process. Then we stop seeing, <clears throat> excuse me, pain and suffering in those terms. We understand that dynamic, we work with it, we welcome these things because we're not identifying just with what's happening to us. We're identifying with this whole integral process of nature. And we actually don't experience it like that anymore. We stop experiencing it as suffering and we see it as the, uh, the appearance of a new state in its opposite form. A very hard thing to describe without experience of it, but it doesn't take that long if you're doing the right work and you're learning the methodology to be able to identify it that way. Even, even if it hurts, uh, there's, there's something else that's happening there which is sweet and good and true, and it's something that we value much more than the, than the temporary state that we're in at any given time as we evolve. Mary. Kevin Long watching on YouTube is asking, is there a way to communicate with our creator? Yeah, there's, there's a couple of ways that Kabbalah says we communicate with the creator. Well, the creator's always communicating with us. We don't understand what the heck he's saying. We can't believe that, that what nature is saying to us is, is what it's truly demanding of us, which is to be opposite to what we are. And it's, the communication happens through other people and what and the demands of other people and the needs of other people there the creator is saying where is your heart this is this is the direction of of life this is my way of 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 functioning this is like how the, the law of nature works where are you what is your response to this so this happens in, in the quality of, of relationship with other people. Everything that, others, that we think of as other people is the relationship of the Creator with us. And there is no way to sense the Creator other, or to, to measure our development other than our attitude in our relationships with other people. And our, the inadequacy that we find there, you know, where we're not doing it, according to what the Creator is saying to us, uh, begets another form of, of communication with the Creator, which is prayer. But prayer is only one thing. It's only asking the Creator to help us be able to respond correctly to what it is that He is saying to us through other people. Help me find a way to give when I don't want to give. or to care when I don't care, to, to connect when I don't want to connect, to, to be a, a positive part of the, uh, of the body of humanity. 
that's it's a constant communication with the creator the most and those are the two meaningful places the rest of the, the our ideas about communicating with the creator are imaginary and they don't really touch anything except our ego mary Sure. On uh, Facebook, Orlando Marrero Torres wants to know, can the search for spiritual freedom lead you to dvekut with the creator? Yes, that's exactly where it leads. But what? let's ask ourselves, what does... Dvekut means um, adhesion, connection, synchronizing with doing the same thing, feeling the same thing. Um, that's the whole goal that that we act as a channel or a you know as the hand of the exact intention that 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 is the creator the whole point is for us to consciously be like what he has already laid out before us you just want to show uh share a few more locations that viewers sent to us we have ethiopia arizona Wales in the UK, Portugal, and the Philippines. And our next question comes from Coltan. How can I get above myself? Does it have to do with the ego? So how can I function above the e my ego? Well, it's, you know, functioning above the ego is like forgetting about yourself. You have, one has to be involved you have to have something that's more important to me than my ego. Um, I have to see what is around me as greater, more important, and worthy of my attention, excitement, you know, inspiration. Um, it's a it's a practical thing. It's not like you can't just think it. It's something that we have to be doing and challenging ourselves with. Um, functioning above the ego. One thing you need to understand is that it doesn't mean <clears throat> that, that you don't have an ego. It doesn't mean that you'll kill it or that somehow it doesn't exist. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's you, <laughs> you know. It's like our essence. What, the only thing that was created was this, this will to receive. It's how we use the, the will to receive. Kabbalah means reception. Kabbalah means, you know, receipt, reception. But it's like how to receive in order to change to alter our perception of reality and synchronize with nature. Nature created the will to receive, uses the will to receive as a force of development. So do we have to learn to do that. If you're doing that, then you're already, if you even want to do that, you're already, to a certain degree, functioning above your ego. You're not its slave. You're not doing what it says. You're kind of looking at it from the side because you're looking at it not as you, but as a uh, as a mechanism in your existence and you know as soon as you can see that your ego is functioning you're not in it completely you may still be dominated by it in general on balance but but you're not completely in it and sometimes you will be completely in it if you want to see it and you want to learn how to work with it for another purpose not for yourself you already got a toehold outside. Okay, thank you for your question, Irma. And I apologize, I missed your first name when I uh, asked your question. Irma Colton is uh, where that question came from. Uh, similar question or related regarding the ego. Doug West wants to know, so what happens when the ego wants to be altruistic? If the desire of the ego evolves to be bestowing, is it technically still egoistic? The thing that evolves to be uh, altruistic is not the ego. You are not the ego. You are, you are kind of a mediating. What, what we are is, is an intention by, by which desires can be directed, but we're not using it. So... Um, Yes, it's possible for the ego to disguise itself in such a way that it takes the benefit of every altruistic act to prove that you, that I am great, that I am a sage, that I, you know, whatever, you know, trip it, it wants to lay on the whole thing. That happens and it's very tricky. <clears throat> 
But um, if you are trying to develop yourself uh, and understand, first of all, what altruism is, which is not clear, it's, we, we still have an egoistic definition of it. It takes some training and, you know, so on. Uh, but you, you do come to eventually recognize the difference between your ego and, and your intention. It's just hard to maintain it. It's why you need other people. You need people to help you do it. You have to see other people working on this too. Because we learn from each other. Uh, it's like building a society, like a really good society that works. Um, if, if the ideals that are shared are clear, then you, you, be, you, you watch the people that you're working with and you, you become impressed by them. And things that you would normally think of as, as egoistic, like jealousy, um, they become very, very useful because you're learning from, from what you see in the general society and it gives you force that you don't have. You get the force of your friends. We can't overcome the ego by ourselves. Uh, there is a mechanism, I'm describing like a mechanism that does happen within within what we think of as a as the individual self but it's really it doesn't play out in the self it it plays out in the relationship with other people uh yeah the ego is really tricky um but you learn how to see its tricks if you learn the methodology you can you can tell the difference between desire and intention which is very very different things we don't try to change desire. We don't try to kill the ego. We use any desire can be used in a correct way with the correct intention. That's how you fool the ego. Hey, Tony, you already touched on the answer um, to the next question. Maybe you want to elaborate. James Owalabi is asking, how do we receive a clear direction Kabbalistically over a confused state or receive an answer to or solution to a question? Say it again. Sure. How do we receive a clear direction Kabbalistically over a confused state or receive an answer to or solution to a question? Okay. That, receiving an answer to a question is not the purpose of Kabbalah. There is only one direction. The, the problem is that we become confused and think that there are multiple directions and multiple answers. There aren't. There is only one answer, which is the solution to absolutely every problem. And it, that's the correct relationship between the will to receive and the will to bestow. That's it. And the difference between those two things. That's it. There isn't anything else. Every problem is a problem of disconnection. Uh, every, every pain and every suffering is, is the result of valuing reception over bestowal. The answer is always to see that there is a single force bestowal governing absolutely everything, including our, my condition at the moment, and looking for for how to reconnect and find that through our relationship with, with others. There is no other problem and there's no other solution. The main problem is that we forget it in a thousand different ways. But that is the spiritual reality. That is spirituality. That's the world we want to reach. That is how we want to live. That's where perfection lies. In, in the feeling that there is nothing but a single unbounded giving force and that we are part and parcel of that and doing the same thing. The, the tools we were given were, are other people and our intention towards other people. So the answer is always that and the problem is always that that's somehow and momentarily hidden from us. Next, Tony Arlene Allen viewing on YouTube wants to know, I would like to share this with a Christian group in Africa to show them how we are similar, the same, and she has exclamation mark after the same and in capital letters. How can this be shared? 
Well, I, I wouldn't bring this to a religious group because religion and Kabbalah are different levels. And a person's faith, like what is motivating a person at that particular point in their development is very, very important. And we should never undercut that for people. Um, nor should we confuse them. It's the kind of thing that a person has to want in order even to be able to hear. If you want to share something, rather than talking to them or sort of, I'm not saying that this is what you're say, doing, but rather than preaching at them and having it feel like it's a personal thing, if you think there's somebody who is particularly sensitive to the spiritual aspect of their religion, and if it's a Western religion, then it, it, it completely synchronizes with, with Kabbalah, then give them something printed. Let them make their own choice. Don't, don't try to bring this to people who have uh, a, a faith or, or like some, some central thing that, that their life and their well-being depends on. You don't want to take that away from people. If you think you can share it with an individual because you know them well enough, and then don't expect a good, <laughs> a good response. But if you think they might be able to benefit from it, Take yourself out of it and just give them the book. Okay, next, need to know, watching on YouTube, needs to know, how does a creator's force actually guide us? Or do we guide the force through our intentions? You can not pay attention to the way in which you're being guided. You can disregard all of the the messages that are coming at you from every direction, from the outside, from the inside, from your family, from friends, from the condition of the world that you see, look at the condition of the world. You know, it's, it's, we're, we're, we're in this sort of totality. Unless we connect, we're, you know, we're going to be in big trouble. It's forcing us to, to a particular place for our own uh, good. You cannot pay attention to it or call it something else. Read the question again. Please, Mary. Or is it gone now? <laughs> it was gone. It, re it reappeared. It's, uh, oh, and now it's concealed again. Uh, I remember the question, though, was how can I share that we're the same? No, that was the one before. Uh, okay. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. Need to know. Needs to know. Does a creative creator's force actually guide us, or do we guide the force through our intentions? Okay. So both things are happening. We, we are ultimately being guided, but our response is what builds that as a reality for us. We can disregard it, or we can work in such a way using the same device that nature uses, and we can fulfill this as our reality. If we don't do it, it doesn't matter how, you know, what stuff gets poured on us, it'll, it'll be felt by us as bad. If we respond correctly, we will be building our awareness of the Creator and, and of the, the actual spiritual state that we exist in. Wait, next question is from John Maneo. How can I understand the difference between my ego and my given talent? You don't have to feel guilty about, about any gifts that you've been given. Uh, and in order to fulfill a, you, whatever talents you've been given, you need to feel confident and you have to, you know, you have to put it out there. There's nothing wrong with that. that that's, that's a, you know, it's a, it's a thrust. It's, it's a mechanism that helps you f fulfill that stuff. Ego is something else. Spiritual, there's, there's material ego and there's spiritual ego. Material ego is good, necessary, useful. You wouldn't, you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't be able to hunt. You wouldn't be able to to uh, supply what's necessary for your family and your children if you didn't have the material ego. Spiritual ego is that you one wants every aspect of our development to bring benefit to myself. That in the end. It says something about me. It's it's it, it's reference to me. That's spiritual ego. Don't worry about the other one. You need it for your health. <laughs> but but spiritual health um, is to work for the benefit externally of, of others and to forget about the self, uh, except to use it in order in order to fulfill the thought of creation itself, which is to 
for you to become fulfilled and for you to help everybody else become fulfilled. They're, they're, they're on different levels. Don't confuse, let's say, the, the, the ego necessary to fulfill your talent with the ego we need to function above to fulfill the, the, the Creator's desire. And we're getting really close to the end. We are pretty much at the end, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, so I have uh, a few announcements, so uh, please sit tight. Uh, you can join Cobb U if you're not already a member, then we invite you to join. You can see the links in the chats. You'll also gain access to several Kabbalah courses from beginners to advanced. Join the world's biggest online Kabbalah community, the ability to ask instructors questions in a student forum, and access to a Cobb U exclusive weekly webinar. Also, you get access to the next Kabbalah Revealed course with Tony starting May 29, 2022. Or if you just simply like to support Cobb U, you find that the content is valuable, you can do that in a couple of ways. First, you can become a Cobb U member and get access to all of the Cobb U courses, thriving community of like-minded spiritual seekers, video on demand, exclusive weekly live events. And also, um, if you join right now, there's an exclusive live event immediately following this event in Zoom, where you can ask Tony live questions and follow up questions if you so choose. Or you can make a donation, and that's very much appreciated. We're all volunteers um, here at Cobb U, so we would appreciate that as well. And thank you. Uh, so many great questions today. Thank you, Tony. Always great to be together. Thank you for your help, Mary. It was great. And I want to I wanna just mention that if you check out um, Cobb U, there's all kinds of things you can do there without, you know, a deep dive. You know, you, there's, there's plenty that you can see. You can taste it and figure out whether it's, uh, it's interesting to you or not. You can decide how much of it you want or not, you know. But if you, if you were interested at all, by what you heard from the questions and what you heard in the answers and if it's something that you know already uh, resonates with your heart then check it out the, you know there's really nothing to lose and everything to gain and um just hope you do and thank you very much for your involvement and your questions they they were great i had a great time thank you <laughs>